Good day to you everyone, my name is Whistler and welcome to a brand new survival let's play series in the 1.18 Caves and Cliffs Part 2 update. This is the one with all of the crazy world generation and you know what, I am all here for it because this this update is, is so crazy. What Mo Yang has done to the game, I am in love with it. And in fact, there's some of the new generation just here at the spawn. You can see this from the, the river with the cliffs next to it. This looks so good. Oh, I love it. But let's just punch our first tree down and we'll gather ourselves some logs. And with those logs, we'll craft ourselves a crafting table and some sticks. And you know what? I should probably mark down the world spawn. So let's put that down there. And we'll, uh, we'll craft a, a, some wooden slabs, I think. Let's go for that. There we go. And we'll just plop those down there. There we go. And now I know where we spawned. And now that that's done, we can craft ourselves a wooden pickaxe. Excellent. Our first tool of the world. And you know what? We should probably make use of this cave entrance that I spawned next to. Let's take some of the stone here and craft ourselves some stone tools. So we're going to craft a pickaxe, an axe, a shovel, and a hoe. But that's it, because I actually have a bit of a weird plan with this world. Like a bit of a weird gameplay plan, and that is that I am not allowed to use conventional weapons as, like, weapons. So, the sword, I cannot use. The bow, I cannot use. And I'm allowed to use the axe, but only for chopping things. So... If necessary, I will beat mobs to death with a stick. Just playing Minecraft in a different way to usual. And I feel like that's a good thing to do with the Caves and Cliffs update. Because so much has changed already. And you know what? I'm just going to head over here and uh, get myself some spruce. Oh, this is a new cave just here, I think. I love the fact that the caves can generate like this now. It's like one of those cracks in the ground. And it's like a slanted crack as well. It's, it's kind of crazy. Oh. We have some snowy snow. There you go. Now, I have to say, I've been playing in the in the snapshots, just like testing things here and there. And I've got to say that the, the powder snow, it's it's a it's scary stuff when you when you actually find yourself falling into it. And it's it's quite hard to tell the difference between snowy snow, like the powder snow and the, the normal snow blocks. There is a slight texture difference, but my goodness, if you're not on top of that stuff. You'll fall right in. <laughs> and then you'll panic. And then you're like, oh, I, I've underestimated this stuff. But I've got a couple of spruce saplings now. And that's all I am happy with. Now, I will be honest. This is actually a seed that I have chosen out for this world. And I would like to go to roughly 500 on the x-axis. Now, you might be wondering, Whistler, why are you playing a normal survival world while you're known for playing hardcore? What, what, what's going on? Why are you deviating from your normal play style or whatever? And I'm, I'm going to be honest, guys. I want to branch out a little bit. So the Hardcore series, that's, that's going to keep on going. Nether Aquarium's going to keep on going. And this is just going to be something else that I have on the channel. Like just a normal survival series. Because I feel like maybe some people would like, would prefer to watch videos of that instead of hardcore where they might be stressing out like oh whistler's gonna die in the next 10 seconds because it's hardcore and he's gonna lose everything and you know what i i'm not about that life i'm about being chilled and happy and all of that sort of stuff so we're gonna play this world in ordinary survival it's still gonna be in hard mode but it's gonna be nice regardless and if you guys have like an issue with uh, me not being in hardcore, just view it as hardcore until I die. I mean, my playstyle, it is a hardcore playstyle anyway, so I probably won't die. <laughs> um, like, I do everything I can to stay alive in this game, and that's not going to change. And I don't know when my first death will be in this world, but I assume it will be a long way in the future. Even the Ender Dragon will not be able to stop me, and I'm probably going to kill it with a stick. And it's going to be awesome. <laughs> but just over here, though, you can see ourselves, our first mountain. And this is one of the things that I picked the seed out for. Here's a cave. That's a very deep cave, actually. Let's not go down there. But this is where I'm going to call home. 
within this valley, like here. It's going to be so cool. We've got a nice village over there too. Uh, that, that's 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 going to be good for some early resources, I guess. Oh, that's actually another village over there. <laughs> uh, I didn't know about that one actually. But yeah, this valley here, this is going to be my valley. We're going to call this home. And I'm going to be honest, I love the new mountain generation in this game. They look so much more like real mountain ranges now. And I've got to say, as someone who has seen many mountain ranges in his lifetime, they're pretty damn good now. They're so much better than they were before. And mountains in real life are really beautiful when you get them at just the right time. I mean, they're, they're, well, it doesn't, they're always beautiful, really, but sometimes they're just absolutely astonishing and I'm glad that I'm able to finally capture that in Minecraft's uh, natural generation. So I guess some of you are probably wondering what the seed is for this world so let me just share that with you all. If you would like to play along with me you can and if you want to build your own setup here within this valley you can. The seed is there for you right there on the screen. Now I know that seed parity is now a thing with Bedrock and Java, but I think there are some seeds that still don't cross over that well, and I don't know if this is one of them. But you can give it a try, although it's probably unlikely. So, I'm sorry about that, but it's something that we're just going to have to get over, because I'm not sacrificing this world. Oh, the first victim for the stick! Thank you, Mr. Fig. I'm a, I'm a little bit hungry. <laughs> I can't sprint anymore. I, I needed to eat. <laughs> Right then, what does this village have to offer? Is there a bed in here or a chest? It's a library. Uh, no bed though. Okay. I'll come back here later for the books though, I'm sure. Oh, here's a bed. Get out! It's mine now. Uh, hello, child. Uh, don't tell anyone that I just booted you out like that, okay? Uh, thank you. Hello, what do you sell? Loyalty 3. That is completely useless to me. Goodbye! You know, I should probably block these villages into these little hot houses here. We don't want them getting out and killing themselves. And you know what? I think I've just placed those blocks in the nick of time. <laughs> that baby villager is uh, ramming that door right now. <laughs> Let's leave him to it. Come on, take the bait. Take the bait. Take the composter bait. Go on, go on. Go in. There we go. You're stuck in there forever. Thank you very much. Enjoy your new composter. Oh, there's another mountain over there. I didn't know about that one. I didn't actually explore too far in this seed, so there's a lot of new stuff that I could still see and explore. It was really just the mountain range that I hope to live in that, that I know about, really. Hello, Iron. I've spied you. Give me your good raw ingots. There we go. And I can't forget about the coal. I can't smelt it without it. Hello, cow. You shall be the next victim to the stick. I'm sorry, but it has to be done. Come back here. C come back. Stop running away. Your death is inevitable. You shall be one with the stick. There we go. Two leather. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, I don't mean to alarm you, Mr. Villager, but you seem to have made your farm on unfertile land. So I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to uh, take these crops back from you because they're, they're not going to do very well here. I'm sorry, but um, they're mine now. Um, this will teach you. You'll have to set your farm up elsewhere I'm afraid somewhere with uh, a little bit more fertility because just there it's not it's not good I'm gonna be honest oh wheat I will take those we could do with a nice early game food source so let's just turn all of this into bread there we go 45 loaves of bread that's awesome um hello you, you don't even have a proper water source I'm sorry but I am revoking your farmer's license. You cannot be allowed to farm here. I'm sorry. I'm taking your composter and your logs. I'm destroying your entire farm because you don't know how to grow crops at all. And in fact, uh, oh, maybe I should leave that. This is not something you see every day. <laughs> a block placed above a dirt path. Wow. Isn't that wild? <laughs> I'm stealing your bell. Thank you very much. Hello, sheep. Meat stick. Here's your best friend now. Thank you. But I can now craft myself a bed. I don't have to steal one from the village. And that is all right in my book. Oh, all right. We've got a cave at the top of this mountain just here. Let's go and check it out. I want to see what these new caves are like. Why, why does the snow look weird? Wait. Oh, this is all powder snow, isn't it? Oh, this is all a trap. 
<laughs> I'm glad that my mind can just like trigger and just be like, there's something wrong here. Because uh, th this is crazy stuff here. This, this is just one giant death trap here. Um, there is a small difference with the textures though, like I can leap across that gap there. I think that the powder snow can't generate with snow layers on top, so that should be a good indicator for what I can stand on. I, I, I say that, I've just fallen in. That's not good. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that guys, I, um, I am a professional Minecrafter, I, I swear. <laughs> okay, like, let, let's just jump our way out of here. Oh! I'm so close to the cave entrance. Come on, um, let's get some blocks out. Okay, there we go. Um, I need a couple more. Uh, two planks. There we go. And I'm already being attacked by an army of zombies. <laughs> okay, um, let's just back away from those fellas. Um, how am I going to take on these guys? Um, um, let me just craft up some more planks and tower up. So I can figure out a plan. Although, maybe these zombies are already going to take care of themselves. <laughs> I think the powder snow is just going to kill them for me. Oh, this is fantastic. Oh, this is taking a long time. <laughs> oh, there they go. Okay. Oh, they've got a lot of hit points, surprisingly. Um, this cave is looking really interesting, though. It's like a nice cave. Like, I didn't think that these could generate in, like, a, a Minecraft world. Hello, zombie. Are you going to... Okay, um, I see you've opted for the death by fire rather than the death by ice approach, okay? I, I won't judge. You be you. If that's what you prefer, well, I, I'm, I, I'm just going to let you go ahead with that decision. Goodbye. Um, but yeah, ice caves. So this isn't like an official biome, but it's, it's crazy to me that this can just generate naturally. I'm so thankful for this because it looks so cool. I absolutely love the fact that the world generation can come up with something like this now. But I have spied some iron at the entrance here, so let's just place some blocks here and grab the iron. Thank you very much! Now that we have some of the basic resources though, we're gonna head to where I would like to call home. And that is towards the top of the valley over here. It's, uh, it's uh, got a nice sweet spot to it. Ooh, pumpkins. I'll, I'll keep notes of that, thank you. I'll, I'll come back there in the future. But yeah, as we near the top of this lip just here, I'm sure we'll get a good view of where we're going to call home. Oh yeah, just look at this meadow. And the valley. Oh, the mountain range. This is beautiful. I, I, I love this so much. <laughs> oh, I'm so thankful that this can generate now. Let's just uh, edit the terrain slightly though. Get rid of some of these uh, weird Minecrafty hiccups. Just fill up like these little holes. I'm not a fan of those. But yeah, this is where we're going to call home from now on. I hope you all like it because we're going to have an absolute blast doing some building here. Now give me your suggestions, everyone. What should we call this valley where we're going to build our future town? Because I, I'm not actually quite sure at the moment. Like I could call it Whistler Valley or something, but I'd like something more imaginative. So let me know in the comments down below. Now, if I'm going to call this home, I should probably dump some of the resources here as well. So let's craft a chest. In fact, let's craft two. There we go. Let's just dump all of our resources in there. And let's smelt up the iron that we have. We have six raw ingots. And that should be hopefully enough to get us started. In fact, I've just spied a little bit more iron ore up here. So let's grab those. Thank you very much. That brings our total up to eight. And now we have eight iron ingots. Fantastic. So we'll turn that into an iron pickaxe. Just like so. Excellent, isn't it? Iron pick. And what else should we do with this? Let's craft an iron helmet. There we go. Now I have a little bit of basic protection as well. Fantastic. Is that a dripstone cave over there? Okay. Let's check it out. Ooh. Oh, this is looking good already. This looks to be a, uh, a proper dripstone cave biome. You won't get these dripstone clusters inside of normal caves anymore, so that's quite interesting. Oh, no, I've been rudely interrupted by a baby zombie. Well, I have one thing to say to you, baby zombie. Meet stick. The stick of destiny. Yes, this stick shall claim your life 
and you'll have no say about that. Out, out, no, no, I'm, I'm on fire. No, that's not good. Okay. Um, uh, oh, there we go. Monster hunter. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, creeper. Nope, nope, nope. Let's just, uh, let's just back away from that real quickly. <laughs> uh, do I want to take this creeper on? You know what? Let's do it. Hello, creeper. It's just me, you, and the stick. There's only one way that this can end, and you know it. And that's with you not existing anymore. You'll be dead. Come on, we've got this. No, lag spike. Oh, no. Okay. Okay, we're, we're fine, I think. Uh, no, come on. I've got this. Um, come on. No, there you go. Um, no! Oh! Oh, how much health does a creeper have? I was smacking that thing for ages. And all these snowballs, though. <laughs> A lot of snowballs. I wonder if I can use that as an unconventional weapon in this world. It could serve as my ranged tactic. <laughs> oh, just look at the entrance to this cave, though. It's so cool. Oh, hello, zombie, though. Let me just introduce you to the stick, because you haven't formally met before. Not you, Mr. Adult Zombie and Stick. Hello, friend. Um, You know what? The stick is probably not a good combination with zombies because of the whole social spawning thing. So I'm going to need a new tactic with these guys. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's just use the powder snow here for that. Yeah, let's just... There's nothing cowardly about this, I promise. Let's just grab this iron, this lovely, lovely iron. Thank you very much for coming before me. <laughs> Look at this cave. I've got a massive cavern inside of my mountain. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is absolutely fantastic. Just look at how deep it goes. Oh, oh it's so big. <laughs> it's so vast. Oh, I wonder what I should build down here. It's going to be such a cool thing here. Let me know, everyone, if you have like a, a good idea for this place. Just leave it down in the comments below. Because all my plans are on the surface, to be honest. Subterranean level is another question entirely. But I now have enough iron to craft myself the rest of the iron armor. There we go. We've got our chest plate, the leggings, and now the boots. This is fantastic. In fact, let's just use my last iron ingot on the shield. There we go. Fully armored up. Got that extra little bit of defense. Oh, hello, zombie. Have I introduced you to our lord and savior, the stick? I'm sure you haven't met it before. Yes. This is the great and mighty stick that's going to end your life right here, right now. Thank you for sacrificing yourself to it. Oh, hello, creeper. Um, it's not really space to have a nice little tango around with you down here in this case. I'll just let you explode like that. Oh, yes. Give me that iron. If possible, I would like to come out of this cave with about a stack. Oh, hello, creeper. Yep. There we go. Always one with the explosions. Oh wow, this is pretty cool generation. It's like the the snow and the ice has crept down this crevasse here. It's pretty cool. Oh yeah, here's a nice dripstone cave. <laughs> Look at all of this pointed dripstone. I'm going to have to be careful caving down here. Like, this pointed dripstone could potentially kill me. And that's, that's not ideal, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> dripstone is deadly. At least the dripstone caves have a lot of copper, though. Now, I would quite like to get started on gathering the resources for our starter base. And unfortunately, they're all quite deep in the world. And I didn't really see, like, a deep enough cave to get down there and gather those resources. So, we're just going to tunnel into the side of this mountain. You know, in fact, let's craft a bucket. I don't have any water just yet. But I suspect that water bucket is going to be extremely useful in these 1.18 worlds now with how high and deep the, the caves can get. Oh, hello, Copper. Oh, I love to see you. You're a very pretty sight to see. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I've just tunneled into the side of a massive cavern, haven't I? Okay, let's just get ourselves a better angle of this. <laughs> oh, just look at how vast this cavern is. Wow, this is insane. There's a creeper party down there. I'm sure they're having a blast. Oh, uh, you know, I kind of want to do, like, the old caving trick and just, like, drop a flare. Like, see how this goes with Optifine's dynamic lighting, and that is deep. That, that took a good few seconds to fall. <laughs> wow. 
But there is a water stream just next to me, so I feel like we should probably grab that. So let's just swim up here. There we go, it's in our bucket now. And we'll just ride this all the way down to deep slate level. This is easy. <laughs> okay, is there any mobs around? I don't think so. I think we're pretty safe at the moment. Let's grab our torch. Ah, so one of the resources I wanted to use in our starter house today is in fact tough. So, I say that we should probably grab a couple stacks of that. We don't need too much. Just enough to serve as a foundation for our house. Oh, hello, creeper. You won't have me. Not today. Oh, no. I've alerted the silverfish. That was not ideal in the slightest. Um, okay, let me get my stick out. Meat stick. The stick of destiny. Um, oh, no. Oh, no, I've forgotten about that silverfish interaction. <laughs> I'm just spawning more with this because I'm not killing them instantly. <laughs> oh no, I can already tell this is going to take a long time. I can hear the blocks breaking though from when I'm hitting the silverfish. Oh no, there's going to be a lot of them, isn't there? <laughs> you know what? Let's speed this up a little bit. Hopefully we won't get too many coming out of the woodwork. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is taking such a long time, but I do think that we're coming to the end of the silverfish. I think there's actually more than just these three in front of me. I think there's like a group and like a pocket nearby. And I can hear them falling and stuff like that. But I don't think I have to worry about them, luckily. <laughs> I just hear them. It's like drop, 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 drop. But yeah, I think I'm all right now. Oh, just look at this cavern. There's so much space. I don't know what I'd do with this place. What, what, what could I build down here? And the, the glow squid with Optifine's dynamic lighting. That, that's really beautiful, actually. Oh, Let me know what you think I should do with this place, everyone. Because this is... Uh, 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 there's just too much potential down here. I can't let it go to waste. Oh, hello, Creeper. I hear you like explosions. Yep, yeah, that's true. Oh my goodness, okay, uh, there are more mobs there than I thought. <laughs> Not the baby zombie. Oh, jeez, I can't even kill these guys with the stick. Oh, they seem to be distracted with each other. But if I hit the, the zombies with the stick, then they're just going to spawn more zombies. So I'm going to need another tactic, and I think that tactic is going to be a lava bucket. So I think there's lava over there, yeah? Um. So I think we're going to have to make a run for it. Come on. Come on, I can do this. We're going to outrun the baby zombie. We've got this. There we go. Right, let's uh, let's go up a few blocks. There we go. And let's grab this lava. Fantastic. Now we just need to drop this on the zombie. Uh, no, he's dodged it. That's not good. Um, There we go. No, ow! Ow! No, this has not gone to plan. I'm out of here. We're leaving. Oh, dear. That, was <laughs> that could have gone better. Um, oh, there's a zombie there as well. Did I kill the baby zombie? I think it's either dead or it's fallen in a hole. And I, I can deal with that. And we'll just kill these zombies instead with our lava bucket. <laughs> oh, yes. Have a nice toasty bath. You could probably do with one after all of this time you spent rotting. And this, my friends, is an amethyst geode. I didn't realize this was going to be here. This is actually fantastic because uh, calcite was one of the blocks I was hoping to use in my starter base. And if I could kill this skeleton without messing up with my lava bucket, that would be terrific. Um, there we go. Finally, he's on fire. <laughs> Is he going to burn to death? Oh, he's, he's got more health than I thought. Come on. Just die already. There we go. But yeah, we're going to be harvesting a large portion of this amethyst geode. I'm going to take as much calcite as possible. We might take the basalt as well, but I don't actually need that. <laughs> oh, I've attracted zombies again. Have some lava. I hear it's your favorite hot sauce. 
And we've got two more this time. <laughs> They're in love with the orange stuff. Hello, sir. I hear you like lava. But yeah, let's just go right ahead and harvest as much calcite as we possibly can. Oh, in fact, I should probably get a screenshot of the coordinates here so that I can come back to this at some point in the future. Perhaps we could make some sort of amethyst farm with the, the budding blocks or something. It's a difficult contraption, I know, but it might be worth it. Who knows? And I do believe that we have successfully harvested the entirety of all of the calcite that was on this geode. Oh, it's such a pretty block. I'm, I'm glad that I'm going to be able to have access to this. We've got four stacks and 50. That's quite a lot, actually. Oh, no, we've got a silverfish again. Okay, let's see how they work with lava. Okay, silverfish equals lava, I think. That's the strat. Oi! No, don't hurt me like that, zombie. You're not supposed to be able to jump up there. Right, okay, come over here. Come on. What are you, what are you doing? Come on. There we go. Right, okay. Have a lava bucket. And just so that I can craft a spyglass later, we'll grab one of those amethyst clusters. All right, I do believe that we probably have enough resources to build our starter base. We've gathered some deep slates as well, and I think that's all we need from down here. But the question is, how do I get back out of here? <laughs> I wasn't exactly leaving a proper torch trail. I was just going by, uh, I was just going from the torchlight in my hands. <laughs> oh, and it's all going wrong as well. I'm being attacked by mobs. No, spider. I do not want to shake hands with you while you're on fire. That's not... That's not something I would like to do. <laughs> Seriously, though, where is the way out? <laughs> How am I already lost? I didn't go that far in here, did I? Oh, jeez. Right, here's a creeper. Have fun exploding. Bang. There we go. Let's just burn that spider. And uh, no... Oh, there's too many mobs here, I swear. <laughs> oh, this would be going a lot easier if I had use of a sword, but we're not doing that in this series. Not yet, at least, anyway. We'll see how long we keep up on that self-imposed rule. <laughs> is there a lighting down here? Yes, there is. So I've been down there. That must have been where I was gathering tough. So I think we've come from this direction. I'm not that sure, though. Uh, oh, no, no, no. I can hear it. I can hear the Enderman. I didn't even see it. I didn't even see it. Jeez. Um, no. Endermen are really scary. <laughs> oh dear, I've only got iron armor. They'll eat through me just like that. Wow, is he going to come back? Am I alone? Has he teleported away? I don't know where he is. I think I'm all right. No, I'm not all right. No, no. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Okay, the water spread that time. I think I'll be all right if I stay here. Where is he? There he is. Hello, Mr. Enderman. I have a lava bucket for you after I just munch on this bread. I hope you enjoy it. I, I hear you get very cold feet when you stand in water. So, I thought you might like some, uh, some fire, some lava, just to warm them up a little bit. You know, Endermen look absolutely terrifying while they're on fire. It's like this demonic entity just teleporting around in the world. <laughs> um, oh, there he is again. I don't know how much health he's got. Is he low yet? Is he gone? He might be dead now. I'm not sure. <laughs> Hopefully he's dead. So, I believe to find my way back out again, I just need to come down here through this little valley of deep slate. And here's where I was harvesting tough. So where did I come from from here? I think I came from this direction. Um, no, there's too many zombies that way. <laughs> Let's not do that right now. Okay, lava bucket. There we go. Oh, I've lost the lava. And there's a creeper. Um, okay, we're going to use that creeper, actually. There we go. Okay, that was good. That was good. Um, let's grab my lava. There we go. Uh, how many zombies have we got left? One zombie. Good. And there he goes. Excellent. Wait, I have an ender pearl now. Where did I get that from? <laughs> I didn't even see that. I guess that enderman must have died then. He'll have dropped it. I just didn't see where it was. 
It's lucky that I just happened to walk over that then. Right, I think I need to get up here. So let's just use our water bucket to do that. I don't want to dig my way up. <laughs> there we go. Are there any mobs up here? Oh, there's a torch. This might be it. Right, okay. Um, Let's just let this creeper blow up. There we go. Let this one blow up. Fantastic. That zombie's dead. <laughs> Uh, what's with all the mobs? There we go. Right, okay. That's two on fire. No, ow! Ow! Let's just put myself out. There we go. This has not gone well. <laughs> we just need to herd the mobs around a little bit more. Once they're all dead, I'll actually be able to climb my way out of here. <laughs> they did not want me to leave. They are dead set on me staying here. <laughs> right, okay. So I need to get up there. And I think the best way is to just uh, to pillar up. So let's just go ahead and do that. Ah, there we go. We finally have reached the way out. <laughs> I'm surprised I got lost in here so easily. I guess that's a, that's a side effect of not placing torches down. I was just wandering around with it in my hand. <laughs> oh, excellent. We've made our way outside once again. And you know what? I've got to say, I quite like how pretty everything here is at night. It's definitely got a certain aesthetic to it. Although I will just sleep because there are zombies jacking me already. <laughs> we are beginning to run a little low on the bread supplies right now though. So I think we should start our wheat farm. We gathered plenty of seeds on the way over here. So let's just plant them and let our crops grow. I have climbed to the very top of the mountain range. I have decided that I would like to see what's on the other side. So, we will witness that together for the first time. Let's just see what's over this ridge. Okay, we've got some, uh, f a forest. Is that a river biome? It's, it's, I don't think it's an ocean. I'm not seeing any kelp. But if that's a river biome, my goodness, that's the biggest river biome I've ever seen. If that is a river biome, I'm glad. I'm super glad that they've uh, replaced the, the old Minecraft lakes because they were not good. They were completely devoid of life. So to see, like, a proper lake now... That's good. I have made the realization that I probably need a little bit of dirt for terraforming purposes with my starter base. So let's just get rid of some of this terrain just here. The bit of the terrain that I'm not particularly a fan of. Oh, hello, pillagers. Um, I, I wasn't expecting you. I, I wasn't expecting visitors so soon. Um, do you like hot sauce? Do you want to do you want to have a try? Here, ha have a have a nice mouthful. Yeah, how's it? How is it? How's it taste? Yeah, do you like it? Oh, I think they loved it. They couldn't contain their excitement. Wow! And there goes the last one. So yeah, the reason I wanted more dirt is I wanted to expand like the little bit of this hill here, just to make it a little bit easier for me to build a house on top of it. And there we go. We have increased the landmass just here a little bit more. So yeah, let's get started on the starter house. So I should probably let you all know my plans for this area, just to lay down the theme. So I quite like to pull off like a uh, some sort of steampunk vibe, but not entirely steampunk. Like I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to pull off steampunk. I I'm not that experienced with the with the theme, but. We're going to give it a try. So we're going to include copper and deep slate into our starter house and see how that goes. But the plan for the rest of the area is I'd quite like to set up like some sort of like a steampunk trading area. Complete with airships. It's going to be awesome. But to get started with our house though, we're just going to plop down some blocks to serve as an outline to start off with. We'll use spruce logs and tuff for that purpose. Oh uh, yeah, here we go. I think this is a good enough shape. And you know what? I'm actually going to replace these bottom logs with barrels. Just to help add a little bit more detail to this house. And then on top of those barrels, we're just going to pillar up another additional four blocks. And in fact, I've made a mistake here. <laughs> There's meant to be a barrel just here. So that means that I need to extend the this side of the house out by another block. <laughs> My bad. That's an easy enough fix to do, though. There we go. Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. And once those logs are all in place, we're just going to go ahead and strip everything. 
And then to serve as our second floor to this building, we're going to bring the logs out by one block to sort of create like an overhang. It's going to increase the size of our house by a little bit. And then for our walls, we're going to use the calcite. That's what I was collecting it for. And just making sure to leave gaps for the windows. And then for our second floor, we're just going to use the exact same pattern we used for the first floor, but without the tough blocks, because that's only our foundation for this house. And then I'd quite like to build a little roof above the entrance just here. We're going to use some deep slate tiles and some deep slate... So the polished variant for that is going to serve as a nice little roof just there, see? Although I didn't actually mean to put uh, the calcite blocks here. They were just there so that I could place the stairs. <laughs> and then just to add a little bit more detail to our windows, we're going to add some oak trap doors to act as window shutters. And to add even more detail to the house, we're going to add buttons. Yes, there we go. It's going to create like some sort of studded effect and I've just realized my scaffolding is in the way. Let's get rid of this. <laughs> and I'd also quite like to outline the roof with copper and it's going to have like a, a weird aging pattern to it and unfortunately I do not have time to age this copper today so we're just going to place it down and let it age over time but it also means that I have to gather the copper in the first place. So let's do that real quick. Let's just set down another couple of furnaces for that. There we go. Hopefully that's enough copper for the roof. I'm not 100% sure about that though. Get out of my house, Enderman. This place isn't open yet. And besides, I'm the one that's supposed to be living in here. And while our copper is cooking, we'll add some spruce fences and fence gates to the build just to add some more details to the outside. Yeah, right. I think that looks good so far. I'm liking this. And then we're going to add a little bit of a deep slate overhang and we'll place our roof on top of that. Just making sure to use the polished variants for the corners. And there we go. Hopefully this is enough copper to create the outline of our roof. I'm super glad that Mo Yang have decided to buff the, the copper rates from using them with the stone cutter. Because this was a needlessly expensive block before. And it's now a lot easier to use. And I'm super thankful for that. You now get four cut copper per copper block. That's awesome. Used to only get one. <laughs> And for a building block, that's that's not ideal. <laughs> but our roof, I do think we're just going to try and use some intersecting A-frames here. It's just going to be a simple staircase roof. Nothing too fancy, although maybe using the copper with what I hope to have it look like in the end product. Maybe it will be fancy, who knows? And we're just going to place some spruce fences there. And you know what? I don't actually want this copper here. We actually want copper stairs. <laughs> So we'll just place those in as well. Then to fill up the rest of the roof, we're going to use deep slate tiles and polished deep slate stairs. And we're going to have the tiles hugging the copper a little bit towards the bottom. And then we're going to progress onwards to polished deep slate. Hopefully that's going to give us a little bit of nice variation to our roof. Oi, no, get out of my house. This is not for you. We are not open to new tenants. This house is for me, and I will beat you to death because of it. You are trespassing. Goodbye. And you know what? Just to add a little bit more details to this house, I think we should add some uh, spruce trap doors to our stripped logs just here, just to give this house a little bit more depth to the walls. There we go. That looks nice. <laughs> I've actually, uh, I actually need windows. <laughs> There's no sand at the top of the mountain, so I'm going to have to come down to this river biome here. I think there's sand down here. Ooh, sugar cane. I will take that. Thank you very much. We use that to craft us some bookshelves. And here's the sand. There we go. I don't really have a good place for the sugar cane. Let's just put it here. There we go. Oh, dear. I'm running low on fuel. <laughs> I'm going to need some more coal. Like, uh, I'm having to lose my logs to charcoal. Just trying to smelt the sand up. But it's going to be worth it because now I have glass panes. These are going to serve as our windows. And there we go. The exterior of our house is pretty much done now other than the aging copper roof. I hope you all like it. And now I'm going to snap my fingers and we're going to have an interior done too. And I'll give you a nice tour of the house. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We now have a completely finished interior. We've got a bedroom, we've got a kitchen. Oh, 
It's fantastic. Let me show you. So just over here, we have a red carpet entrance with some amethyst blocks beneath that. We've got a nice dinner table just here with some barrels as our table. We've got a nice lantern to light up the floor as well. And uh, we've got our flowers and our sapling. And I didn't mean to break that just then. Let's just put that back. <laughs> um, over here, we have our kitchen. We've got two smokers, a blast furnace and two normal furnaces and a crafting table as well got some saplings here to serve as like our our herbs we've got some storage we've got some shelves in fact i might change those top shelves to be campfires let me just do that real quick <laughs> there we go three campfires let's just lay them down and uh, let's put them out as well oh yep yeah, there we go three shelves and i think we can stack some food on top of there as well so let's go get some potatoes and we're just going to put them on top of the campfires although you can't really see them <laughs> okay forget that idea we're just gonna have the campfires be pretty much empty because you can't even see what's on them <laughs> but yeah this is gonna serve as our kitchen and over here we have a nice staircase taking us up to the bedroom we have a nice three wide bed here because that's what someone like me deserves someone of my status i need a big bed there we go I need to stretch out in the nighttime. And I've got some storage up here as well. Not too many chests. This is just to serve as some nice temporary storage. And we've got some barrels for extra storage as well. That's actually one of the reasons I incorporated it into the build. So that we've got storage literally all the way throughout the house. <laughs> but yeah, this is my starter base. I hope you like it. I'm glad that we finally built a starter house in the first episode for once. I don't think I've ever done that in any of my worlds before. <laughs> in fact, my, my normal hardcore world, it still doesn't have a, a house. And I'm almost 60 episodes into it now. <laughs> and just in case you're wondering where I got that red carpet from and the red wool for the beds, I herded some sheep over and I dyed them red. There we go. They're, they're just here in a pen now, minding their own business. I think we might make a proper home for you guys next time. What do you think? Yeah? Yeah, I think you'll like that. But yeah, that's gonna have to be the end of our first episode of this brand new survival Let's Play series in the Caves and Cliffs Part 2 update. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>